Bridge Church, we are so excited to welcome you to church this morning. My name's Libby. And I'm Lisa. And we've got an exciting morning lined up for you. We've got Bex leading us in worship. I'm looking forward to that. And we've got our series epilogue today. So that's very exciting. So exciting. But before we get started, I'm going to ask Libby a question. Ooh. Here we go. You ready? Yes, I'm If ready. If you could ask the disciples one question, what would it be? Oh gosh, that is tricky. Um, if you've got any ideas at home, please comment them. What would you ask the disciples? Um, I think my question would be, what was Jesus like when he was tired? Because like, I know when I'm tired, I get a bit grouchy and moody. And I don't, I don't think Jesus would have got like grouchy. Well, they might have done. I'd be interested to know, what was Jesus like when he was tired? That would be Very my question. Good question. That would be my question. Amazing. So we are going to hand over to Bex now. He's going to lead us in worship. So get ready, turn your attention um, to God and let's worship God together. Amen. You are the word of the beginning. One with God, the Lord most high. You're here.
of finding your joy and your hope and, and everything in, in Jesus. And I was reminded as we were singing um, that actually exalting God and, and praising God, that's a choice. And sometimes when, when we're going through difficult times and things aren't going quite our way, we can not do that. And, and I, I was reminded of Job, you know, and he lost everything. And yet he still chose to exalt God. He still chose to, to worship him because that's where he found his hope. That's where he found his identity. Um, so I'm going to sing through this again um, and just remind yourself that God is still good. He still deserves our praise no matter what we face. Um, he's still awesome he's still wonderful he's still mighty he's still powerful he can still move even if you feel hopeless he can still move um he deserves our praise Oh. 
Father, I just thank you that we have the freedom to worship you wherever we are and whatever we're doing, it can become an act of worship to you. So I pray as we go about this week, Lord Jesus, that you would show us ways to worship you while we're going out into our jobs, into our into the shops, um, with our neighbours, when we're doing the washing up, whatever it is, God, that we would find a way to use those as an act of worship to you, our holy God. Amen. 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 We're going to hand over to our core team now. Over this um, past six months, it's been an interesting year for us. I think we can say that. Um, but God has been speaking to us about different things. And this morning, we're going to hear from each of the core team members who are sharing some of the reflections on what God has been talking to them about in this season. So uh, get your notepads ready, take some notes, um, and we'll look forward to hearing what they have to say. So it's really great to be able just to share uh, some thoughts with my good friend, Pastor Mike Farley, and everybody that is watching this this morning. Uh, as a senior leadership team, um, one of our roles in the life of the church is really to discern what God is saying to us and offer some wisdom and some guidance in how we as a body of Christ can keep moving forward. And so Mike and I are just going to have a little bit of a conversation over the next 10 minutes around some of the things that God has been talking to us about and some of the things that we want to encourage you with. And just before we started filming now, Mike was talking a little bit about this phrase, pressing in. So I wonder, Mike, if you want to just share a little bit more about what you really are thinking around that. Yep. What does it mean for us as people of God to press in? Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, I remember when, um, when you, Dave, um, shared right at the outset of lockdown when suddenly everything happened in March and we wondered what on earth was going to be taking place. And, uh, and your first video was very much about pressing in, leaning into God and, yeah. and, and taking this as a season in which we would hear God speak. Uh, maybe even more loudly than we ever have as everything else went quiet and still um, what would God be saying and not to try and uh, disappear from that because yeah. obviously we weren't able to meet in this hall here we weren't able to meet together at all as a church and it's all right. straight away onto video and what do we do yeah. so so I know and I'm sure so many of us out there took that word to heart we we did that and we pressed in and I know for me a lot of the time was uh, spent uh, in two sort of places because suddenly we went into this community response across Lincoln Sean and I were whisked off at different points yeah. city council and trying to what what needed to keep going so there was a sudden raising of busyness as well as a sudden yeah. stillness as well and it seemed to me that there were two sort of opposite ends but at both times there was a sense of um, aloneness and I think that for me, pressing in over these last six months has been a sense of learning to live well with the aloneness. Um, you know, just recently having to uh, self-isolate as well mm. was very much being on my own, getting on with stuff, but actually that aloneness that, uh, that enabled me to stop, 
to pause. I think uh, I introduced um, a, a Sunday morning with a, with a be still and a stop and a breathe. And I think to me, that's been part of my pressing in is to actually forcibly slow down and, and purposefully and intentionally speak to God and say, I'm leaning in, Lord. What is it that you're saying to us? What is it you're saying to me in this season? And, uh, and spending those times of quiet and mm. allowing God to minister to me and, 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 and hearing him speak in all manner of different ways. So to begin with, there was a lot of chance to read, which I yeah. had in such a long time. And, uh, and so the chance to sit in the back garden, to read uh, a variety of books, to read scripture, obviously, but to read a variety of books that could challenge and test me. And, um, and so I found that a really fruitful time to be able to do that. But as things escalated and as things uh, started to get even busy with the venue opening up again and you, you get into a, a busy season again where there's a lot cramming round, you can't just sit necessarily have that time but um but actually finding those times carving those times but actually then seeing it uh in other people so we we've seen god working in people's lives in such a magnificent way yeah. even today just before coming here um suddenly we had a family that was in crisis that we needed to provide for uh, another guy walking in um who'd been helped only a few weeks ago bringing a friend who's, who was in the same position and saying, this is the place to come because that's where you they help you. And suddenly what I was hearing from God, which was about um, holding people gently, yeah. acting in utter kindness, those two words, gentleness and kindness, uh, really have um, resonated with me over the last six months and how we are gentle and kind to one another as the church and into the community. And what he spoke about was exactly that, that we'd, we'd held him gently and uh, and we'd 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 offered acts of kindness, words of kindness that uh, that just enabled him to have a stability in the midst of the chaos of his life. That's and I, that's amazing. And I yeah. think that's some of the key things. We we are living now, aren't we, in this chaotic time? We don't quite know what's happening. Um, and then, but in the midst of that, God is our rock. He he makes us stable. And as we lean in and press into Him. That's the stability. Whilst everything is all around us, I think Paul speaks of it, doesn't he? That storm around and mm. everything happening, um, he can be still because he knows who he's centred upon. And when our centre is in Christ, then then it doesn't matter what the circumstances are. And I think that, to me, has been such a major part of the learning. That's wonderful. You know, you, you mentioned there, Mike, about um, certain things that sustained you, like books you've read, yeah. but the primary book being God's Word yeah, itself. Absolutely. So. Just take a few moments now, you know, we, we, we want to constantly remind one another, don't we, that it is God's word that sustains us. So maybe just share a couple of specific scriptures that you feel that God has been speaking to you during yeah. this season. A couple, yeah. a couple of verses that you feel God's really been laying on your heart and speaking to you I think, through. And, and particularly, um, even just recently, I, was, I, I think I put that in the vlog, Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall yeah. not want. Uh, and he makes me lie down in these green pastures. And when it was locked down and it was the spring was so summery and all of that, there was a sense in which the green pastures was just the brightness of the colours. I remember sitting in the back garden and I, I, I started to look at the cherry tree in our garden and seeing how it sprung forth. And there was a sense in which that was a real green pasture time. It was so still, there wasn't mm. any traffic and noise and, and those sorts of things. We could hear the birds singing again. There was a sense in which there was a reality to uh, the green pastures that he was laying me down in mm. as it were and the still waters and all those sorts of metaphors um but recently i spoke about how um the lord had sort of put me into the point of but don't forget i bring you to green pastures in the midst of the dark valley and yeah. to me uh, there's been a lot of dark valley times just recently. We know of our friends who have passed away. There are mm. people who are coming down with COVID, various things, all starting to build up around you and, and the busyness and, and all manner of things that's taking place. And, and Lord, even as I was preparing for that vlog, only moments before recording it, I felt God really planted me, but I lead you beside still waters in the dark valley. I lead you beside and, and make you be still in mm. the green pastures in the midst of the dark valley. Because of course it goes on to say, I'll prepare a table for yeah. you in the midst of your enemies. And I think for, I think for me, the, the, you know, the thought that came to my mind is that that kind of sense of lying in green pastures is, is as much a state of mind yeah. as it is a reality. Yeah. So, you know, 
lockdown, you know, it's almost like we're all physically forced to starve. Yes. But of course, life's not going to be, you know, that's not normal life. We all no. have to work. We all have to do yeah. stuff. And so actually it's learning that even though there was a season where we were physically almost forced to stop back, mm -hmm. how do we live when life gets back to yeah. more of a routine? It's, it. it's the attitude that says, well, I'm still going to carve out those times yeah those yeah. moments to be yeah. still, to reflect, to yeah. rest in God's presence. We've got to have that because that sustains us. Yeah, and because like the, the shepherd image, the sheep could run all over the place. And there's a sense in which, yeah, we, we, we're living through a season where there's so many unknowns, aren't we? Yeah. I know you spoke just before and about dealing with questions and handling the questions. And I suppose there's the questions when it's all still and quiet and maybe seems serene, but there's the questions in the dark valley as well, isn't there? Yeah. And in that psalm, it's so quickly into all those stages isn't it there's the enemies as well what what's yeah. what's our enemy right now it could be covid but it could be all manner of things it could be fear it, it could be um seasons of anxiety we're going through as well isn't there there are, where um he's going to prepare a feast for us but it's in the midst of those times yeah. and and you wanted to reflect upon questions and, well yeah uh, and, and you you've been grappling with that absolutely you know I, i've said this before to the church and i'll probably say it a hundred times again but i think it's I, i'm becoming more and more convinced of this that you know as, as leaders of of our church it's not our job to give everybody the answers because well primarily because we don't have the answers okay. ourselves mm -hmm. but also it's actually it's not god's responsibility either and i think you know one of the things i feel that god is saying to us through this season is that is that the true test of faith is is the trust of God in the unknown. Mm. You know, actually, um, we don't need faith to worship God and trust God when we have all the answers. No, that's right. You yeah. don't need yeah, faith. Absolutely. Because faith, Hebrews tells us, is being sure of what you hope for and certain of what you do not, not see, yeah. not sure of what you already have mm -hmm. and certain of what you already see mm -hmm. that's not faith and so for me this this sense of uncertainty yes it, it it shakes us but i think alongside the uncertainty and the questions is is i think what god is saying to us is that it's okay to be honest in that yeah. sean and i were having dinner with a with a, a couple uh, just last night and we were talking about how actually it's okay to have questions of god Mm. it's okay to even get angry at god Absolutely. it's okay to do all of these things to god or at god but the, the the key in that is bring them to god yeah actually it's better to bring your anger and your frustration Absolutely. to god yeah. than to keep it yourself and run away and you know we there, there are all sorts of questions and and i think you know for for many of us the human nature the human tendency is to try and answer all the questions mm -hmm. you know the why why is covid yeah. around this yeah. etc et and i'm not saying that we shouldn't answer those questions or seek solutions to those but actually it's, it comes back to that word rest mm -hmm. as we rest in the uncertainty and we rest in the tension of not knowing everything i think it's in that that god comes and comforts us mm -hmm. and answers mm -hmm. uh, and heals and restores and it's learning to be okay with not being okay yeah and, um, and be okay with not knowing as well um, i mean in our day and age and this goes back to the enlightenment doesn't it as it sort of traveled through that kind of thinking was we, we can nail this we can sort this we can reason all of this out and we kind of rejected mystery in the west yeah. don't we and and the sense in which living with the mystery and the tension that that mystery brings there's a there's almost as if there to me it's almost like there's a stretch in which god then fills yeah and and he comes and like you said he brings a restoration he, he you know like sean often says I've, god says i've got this but you might not actually realize what this is mm. that he's got and it's going to be much bigger and more splendid and and deeper uh, than we possibly can imagine, even in the midst of what that crisis might be or that yeah. circumstance might be, isn't it? Absolutely. You know, just just as we draw this time to a close, I, I'm reminded of a message I shared with our church, probably I think might have been a year or so ago, just uh, just before Christmas, and and kind of the the thrust of my message was this: is that uh, you can't possibly know God. 
yet you can know God. Mm -hmm. And that sounds like a contradiction, but it's not a contradiction. It, it's, a, it's a paradox yeah. that God is so big and so, dare I say, in one sense, distant, yet he's so close at the same yeah. time. Yeah. And, and as you read God's word, you see these two almost facets mm. of, mm. of God's identity that, that he's so big that we can't possibly fathom him. You know, you've heard me talk a lot about the book of Job. It's a book that, that troubles me deeply, but I think God's put it there for a reason to actually teach us that he's God and we're not. How, how dare we question his methods and his motives? He's so far beyond us that we can't possibly understand him. Yet at the same time, he's as close as a brother. And I don't understand how that works. How can I worship a God that in one sense is so beyond yet in another sense is so close. And it's, to me, faith is walking that journey mm -hmm. of, of the mystery. If we lose a sense of mystery and awe of God, we're in trouble. Yeah, in, in a sense, we then would bring God into our own the moment we The moment we make him so small yeah. that he's almost like our pal and our buddy, yeah. we, we've yeah. lost it. But then at the other time, the moment we see him just as this big, awesome, we, we can't we we don't have that intimacy so my encouragement to us as we draw this time mm -hmm. to a close and, and i'll just ask mike to pray for us is is walk that line of god is a god of mystery yet god is a god of revelation and as we hold those two things in tension uh he will lead us through uh those those dark valleys in our lives so mike mm -hmm. why don't you just yeah. just pray for us heavenly father i thank you and praise you that uh Yes, indeed, you are truly beyond us mm. and beyond all measure. But equally, you are so intimate with us and so close. And Lord, we thank you that we live in the tension of that. We thank you that you are not a God who we can just put on a mantelpiece, but you are a God of the whole universe. You created everything and that you know us so very intimately. You know exactly what we're going through at this very moment in time. So, Lord, help us in the midst of whatever valleys we may be in, whether we're in a dark season and a dark valley, whether enemies are all around us or whether we are in this time of stillness and rest. You call us to stop, to be still and know that you are God and that you lay us in green pastures and lead us beside still waters in the midst of the circumstance, mm. in the midst of the mystery. So, Lord, I pray that you would aid us to keep on leaning into you keep on listening to you and keep on opening ourselves up to your Holy Spirit so that we will indeed be people who walk together by faith. In Jesus' name and for his glory. Amen. 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 Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Dave. God bless you. Amazing. Thanks, uh, Dave and Mike, for sharing that. Uh, we're going to have a few thoughts from uh, myself, Sean and Tim as well on what God has been saying to us so far, reflecting on this year, what have we learned? Because what we don't want to do is miss all that God is teaching us through the tough moments and the good moments. And so we've got lots to share. So I'm going to kick us off today uh, with Tim. Um, what is it the Lord's been showing you over this weird year that is 2020? What are some of the things he's deposited in well, your heart? Well, it's absolutely a weird year. Um, I think for me is that everybody has had at the beginning of this year all their plans and purposes mm. you know we have our, our our life mapped out we have mm. jobs mapped out we have True. church mapped out we have our social lives mapped out uh, family <laughs> lives mapped out i mean my, my, my son was due to get married this summer it was oh. all mapped out but what do we do when things change so radically that everything stops mm. we have to complete do a complete review retake that's got to stop that's got to stop that's mm. on hold that's rescheduled what do we do and, the, and I think that it's quite a shock, you know, to our generation because mm. we, we've not experienced that before. Mm. That kind of everything stopped because everything is, there's, there's no reason for anything to stop except this this COVID now has mm. come in and stopped us doing what we all want to do. Yeah. Um, mm. And to our, to our system, I think it's an, it's an emotional shock as well, I think, yeah. for, for many of us. You know, mm. we can't meet up with friends and families as much as we wanted to go on holiday. Yeah. And that's, mm. that's, that's a big one, isn't it, people? Um, but we've got to remember that God is always in control. Yeah, mm. that's that's one thing that's yeah. so amazing that He's always there, and He's the one that all His plans and purposes don't stop mm. just because because ours stop, mm. you know. And uh, I've been uh, encouraged recently by, uh, and I'm sure you'll be. Psalm it's um, Isaiah 46, and it, it's a beautiful psalm, really encouraging. 
if, if you read it, it talks about the gods of the, the nations being idols and, and even the beasts and, and the burden and, and the, 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 the uh, carriages can't carry that weight. Wow. And then, um, but then God says in, 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 in verse um, four, two, three, he says, listen to me, O house of Jacob and all the remnant of the house of Israel who have been, who have been upheld by, by me from birth, who have been carried from the womb, even to your old age, I am he, and even to grey hairs, mm. I will carry you. Yeah. And this is a complete contrast with, mm. you know, the, the, the people are carrying their gods, but God says, no, I'm not like that, I'm going to carry you. That's it, yeah. Which is absolutely amazing. And, and then he goes on, on the end of it, he says that all my plans and purposes will be fulfilled. Yeah. And he says, and this is a great um, chapter of, of Isaiah, because God says something amazing we should. He says, remember this. Mm. And when God says, mm. remember this, it's something really to take note. Yeah. He says, and show, uh, remember this and show yourselves men. Recall to mind. Remember the former things of old. And he goes on, for I am God, there is no other. Mm. Wow. I am God, there is no one like me. And I declare the end from the beginning. Mm. And we're just in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll, you know, yeah, somewhere, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And he says, and from ancient times, things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. Incredible. So in all what's going on, God has got his plans and purposes. And yeah. we've just had to reconnect with those things and sometimes realign ourselves with the God who is with us, the God who carries us. Mm. You know, I think that's just amazing. That's and it's incredible. utterly infuriating when you're in the middle of that as well. And you <laughs> feel like, I don't know, the be well, you kind of know the beginning, but I don't know where the end is. I don't know what's after this. Yeah. That's it. Because yeah. we like to be in control, don't we? We like, Absolutely. as you say, like we've made plans across the year. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And when those plans go out the window, uh, we're no longer in control. Mm. That's yeah. it. And we like to be in control, mm. but this says God's in control. Awesome yeah. stuff. That's really yeah. good. Sean, how about you? How have you found this year? And what's the key thing that you're taking away that actually, you know, God has shown me something unique through this? Mm. I think um, it's quite similar to Tim, actually, off the back of what Tim was saying about the fact that, that God knows, but we don't know. And I think personally for me, um, I've been in situations where things are out of my control with health and different things. And then you learn to rely on God personally but i think being a church pastor um you love to be there for other people and when somebody's in a difficult situation you love to somehow fix it for them and i think for the last six to eight months something that god has been teaching me is that he's actually the only one who can do that for other people he's the only one that when we're on, on complete lockdown and we're unable to have that same human connection that we usually have with each other mm. that we have to give people to god um we're not able to kind of come and fix this situation for them because this situation cannot be fixed can it mm. <laughs> you know covid we can't control it we can't harness it in we can't control how people are mentally coping with this we can't control different diagnosis that people are, are getting at the moment we can't control it and we can't fix that for people and i think that's been a real journey for me that all i've been able to do mainly is give people to god mm -hmm. so um again it goes back to rhythm of prayer isn't it and and just when when you think about somebody sometimes god brings that person to mind because you want them to, to commit them to the him not necessarily that you're going to then go sort something out for them because we've not been able to um so to be able to you know when you, somebody comes into your mind you think actually god God, we just bless them right now wherever mm. they are whatever they're going through whatever they're feeling will you just be with them be present with them and that's been a real journey for me just that it's not about the kind of practically right how can we sort something out for people it's how can I just give them back to God and know that God is in control mm. and trust them into the hands of God and that's it's been really really difficult because like you said we like to be in control <laughs> and we like to um, be able to be there for people and sometimes we just haven't been able to and that's been a bit heartbreaking but also understanding god in all of that situation i think it's, there's an amazing theme that's coming out of all of this uh, with everybody really i mean you listen to most people that are sharing reflections at the moment and it is all around this new almost like a new level of reliance on god mm. that wasn't there before and it's not that we didn't trust god it's not we didn't believe in god it's just we're very competent at fixing it and yeah. doing our own thing and yeah. like now there's a place where like God, this is totally beyond us. Yeah. Um, like in terms of the church, we've got to be connected. Like we've got to be genuinely in community for the 
this thing to work yeah. um, for for people that are in a place of need. Like we can meet practical needs, but at the same time, we totally need God's resources. Mm. Mm. Um, and as you say, like for people that we're meeting that are broken, yeah. um, because none of us have been here, we're in a weird situation where the whole world is going through something together. Yeah. No one knows the answer to this thing. So it's kind of like, God, only you mm. can fix this person. Yeah. Um, have, has that been like a big demarcation for you guys? Like recognizing that we really do need God's strength more than ever? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And, and the, in, in all of that, God is still in control. We, yeah. we, we're totally out of control of this yeah. in general. But there are also opportunities. Yeah. There's opportunities for ministry. There's opportunities yeah. to, to, to give in new ways. Yeah. There's opportunities even to express church in new ways. Very yeah. true. You know, we've got our en encounter evenings. We've got mm. our, our, our new, this Sunday, we've got our, our live meeting here. Mm. You know, we've got, it's just, just opportunities to express church life and our lives in new and different ways, mm. Mm. which are just as fru fruit more as fruitful as before. Yeah. Very yeah. Just true. different. Yeah. And I think that's the thing I've noticed through this time is, it's almost like God's been asking that question, you know, what did you think was the most essential things to church? Mm. Uh, and not only church, but uh, by that we mean like our connection with each other and our connection to God. That's where we express our faith. Like yeah. what is the most significant thing? And, and the answer, you know, it's, it's the Sunday school answer. It's always true. It's Jesus. Mm. Um, so if you read, you know, Hebrews 12, and I've been reflecting um, on this recently. Um, we have around us many people whose lives tell us what faith means, or some mm. some say a whole host, a cloud of witnesses. Uh, so let us run the race that is before us and never give up. And I think it's just a lesson mm. in perseverance as well, that actually there's so many people that have gone before us that yeah. have mm. got blood, sweat and tears to their story of faith. And we're going through our own trial. And then it says, we should remove from our lives anything that would get in the way and the sin that so easily holds us back. Let us look only to Jesus, mm. the one who began our faith and who makes it perfect. Or some versions say the author and perfecter of our mm. faith. And I think that's, for me, is a key phrase. Yeah. I'm not the perfecter of my faith. Mm. You're not the perfecter of your faith. Like it's not in our ability yeah. to make this right. Mm. Jesus is not only the author, he's not only the one who came up with this whole thing that we call faith. Mm. He's the one who makes it perfect. Absolutely. And that's, I think that's hard, so yeah. hard to reconcile. You know, we're seeing tragedy at the mm. moment. We're seeing mourning and upset. We're seeing joy and celebration. We've got all of these emotions going on together. Yeah. We're seeing people saved in, in this uh, yeah. unusual time. We're seeing people having their faith challenged in this unusual time. And, yeah. and we're working out how the church can connect together in this mm. new way of being. But actually in the middle of that, it's not our job to perfect those things. Mm. That Jesus is the perfecter of our faith. And then just the final bit, uh, it says here is think about Jesus's example. He held on while while wicked people were doing evil things to him. So do not get tired mm. and stop trying. That Jesus has suffered. That we we serve a suffering savior. Yeah. Some yeah. call him the man of sorrows. We sing that song, man of sorrows. Mm. Um, and he knows what it is to go through pain. And at the same time, like should we sometimes expect any different? But actually, we've got to find out how these things fit into our faith. Yeah. And yet somehow God is still able to bring good from those things. Somehow Absolutely. God is still yeah. able to have his way, um, as you say, like he's he's got the plan, he knows it, mm -hmm. uh, he's got it all in his hands. Yeah. And yeah. the danger is that you and I can be like, oh, this is just, it's been, it's been a lot to handle, but mm -hmm. you know what, it's not for us to handle. We're not the ones that perfect this, Jesus yeah. is the one yeah. that Absolutely. perfects this. And I think a really big thing of this is that I was saying to Tim earlier that, um, that in, in one sense, through every trial, there's a gift and there's something to learn from it. And mm. I think the gift for us is that we will be upgraded versions of ourselves after this. I like that. Yeah, so, so the fact that we will um, we will know that no matter what else comes in the future, we we will manage to get through this. We can get through other stuff as well, um, and that's that's really important. That we've dug down deeper into Christ. We've dug down deep into our relationship with God. We've realised that actually church isn't all about just an hour and a half, two hours on a Sunday. Church is so much bigger than that, and so much more important than that. And, mm, and I think that's that's just been a real a real gift. Actually, we will start to see it as a gift once we get through it. Promise you. Um, and you know. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I just think I just think that's that's an incredible thing yes. for us, isn't it, to to remember? Um, I, I know, the, you know, for me that verse just sticks out. Fix your eyes on Jesus in the yeah. middle of this. Like, I don't know what's going on, and you think about you know when um, Peter got out of the boat, uh, Jesus come to me, and he fixes yeah. his eyes on Jesus. And when his eyes are fixed on Jesus, yeah. the storm is raging around him. You, you yeah. heard, we've all preached it a million times. Yeah. And when he takes his eyes off Jesus, he sinks. The waves come crashing in. Yeah. And I just think 
you know, Jesus, Jesus is the answer in the middle of that. Yeah, How absolutely. are we drawing close to Jesus right now? Absolutely. The things we're saying, things we're sharing, what we're encouraging people, is it bringing people yeah. closer to Jesus? Absolutely. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Shell and I were sharing before a, a, a scripture, and it was when um, you know, Peter and John were before the Sanhedrin, and it's, it's, it's in Acts 4, it's a lovely scripture, and it says, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and he perceived that they were uneducated, and untrained men. I relate. They marvelled. <laughs> we all yeah. relate. We all relate. But he said one thing they realised that they took note that they'd been with Jesus. True. That's, that's wow. what made all the difference was the fact that they were with Jesus, and that was their their destiny was all being contained in the fact that they were with Jesus mm. and they were spending time with Jesus. Yeah. That's so good. Um, I'm going to ask uh, both of you to just pray for us in a second, but we just want to encourage you as we close. Um, I'm sure you've been asking your own questions as well. I'm sure through this year, you've been praying your own unique prayers. And I just encourage you in the middle of all that, there's some things that we can't even reconcile. We go, I don't really know where that fits right now. Mm. I'm going to pop that on the shelf. And remember that actually, I need to fix my eyes on Jesus. And mm. as he does that, he's amazing. it's amazing how he's able to bring some good uh, from some very difficult situations. But also that in the middle of this, God is doing so many incredible things. Mm. And you might not hear about it in the same ways, or you might not see it in the ways that you used to, because... Uh, the landscape of the way we live has changed. Mm. But I promise you, some of the stories we're hearing is just incredible about God's goodness, yeah. kindness, the generosity that's well up yeah. in people, the way in which people are searching for faith like never before. And uh, God is definitely on the move. And, and we're called to have those hopeful eyes, those yeah. faith eyes where we see actually this isn't a time for us to mourn, but get excited about what God is doing, that we take um, take time with those painful moments. Of course we do, but we carry that with us and say, actually, we've got to spur on and we've got to press ahead yeah. and keep in tune, keep in step with what the Holy Spirit's saying, keeping our eyes yeah. fixed on Jesus. So Tim, Sean, would you pray for us uh, as we close? Yeah, yeah. Lord, we just thank you that um, you are the God we just read about who, mm. who carries us. Mm. And uh, it, we're not being carried by these circumstances. We're not being carried by all the things that are happening around us. But we're being carried by you. And you are with us. You're with us always, even to the end of the age. We just pray that we would all know your wonderful presence. Your arms of comfort where we need comfort. Your arms of encouragement where we need encouragement. Mm -hmm. And your arms of love where we just need to walk with you. Mm -hmm. And to know you and the power of your great love working mm -hmm. in us and through us as we share that love with each other. Yeah. And we keep those bonds of love, we, and we connect, keep our connections with each other yeah. through the power and the grace that you supply. We ask yeah. in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Yes, Lord, I just pray for every single person who um, really feels like this is probably a year that they never want to relive. And Lord, I just, I pray that we'll start to see what it is that you've done in us and through us over the past six to eight months. Lord, I just pray for those who just really need a sense of peace right now, that they will receive that peace mm. right now as we're praying. That if there's um, a sense of anxiety and they just need some calm in their life, we just pray that over their lives right now. Lord, we just believe and we know that as we fix our eyes on you, it doesn't matter what waves come, what situations happen, because we can focus on who you are. Thank you in your word. It says, why worry? Why worry about tomorrow? Um, because we know that you give us everything that we need and everything that, that we want today um, to live a good life for you. So I just pray that and I speak that over every single person in your mighty name. Amen. Amen. Thank you guys for sharing with us. I uh, hope you've been encouraged by that and ask that question. What is it that God has shown you over this year? May the grace of God be over you. Bye bye. Massive thank you to Dave, Sean, Mike, Julian and Tim for those thoughts. It's given us a real food for thought about um, what God's been speaking to us about over this season. Um, why not drop us a comment? Let us know what God's been speaking to you about in this season. Um, and just massive thank you to our leaders for guiding us through this season. Amazing. Right, so make sure you stay connected with us. There's loads of ways you can connect. So you can head over to the website. We are bridge.org. Org. If you're not already signed up to Church Suite, you can go on there, sign up to Church Suite. It'll give you all the events. You can sign up for tickets and it'll be great to see you on there. And also after our service today and on Sundays, we have our Zoom prayer meeting. If you haven't got the link, if you're on my Church Suite, it's on there. If you're not on my Church Suite, private messages and we will get the link over to you. And it would be so great to see you for a time of prayer together as a family.
Amazing. And there's also some of our in-person gatherings that um, are happening. So on Thursday, we have our encounter night. Make sure you sign up on Church Suite. Again, drop us a message if you're not signed up. Um, and we also have our in-person Sunday gatherings that you also need to sign up for. So if you're coming along to those, please make sure that you book a ticket so that we can make sure that they're COVID secure. Awesome. Amazing. I think that's everything. We have loved spending this morning with you. Stay connected, like, share and subscribe to our channel. And um, we look forward to seeing you soon. Bye. Bye. Thank you to Dave, Sean, Tim, Julian, and Mike. <laughs> <laughs>